Another common source of data is images, scan maps, or whatever, that does not have coordinates in it. Um, you can often come to a, a national park and you'll be given some fine map and you'll like to work with that map or some other map that you have obtained. And this is basically the principle of assigning coordinates to this type of data. I'll demonstrate it using um, some historical Danish data. I will um, go to a website called Historical Maps on the Net. Um, which contains um, historical Danish topographical maps, but they have not been assigned coordinates as yet. And I'll there download some data. So I'll go and have a topographical map, and I'll say I want to choose by map, and I'll say, okay, I want around where the university campus is. And what this is Finnish. That's not very impressive. And I will then say I need some data for this area and say search. This gives me a series of historical maps. And I want to take one of these from uh, 1896 and then download this data set here. So this looks like we have the university campus up here. And I'll just say copy, whole map as JPEG and save it. Once it's finished, I will copy it to my um, GIS folder. I'm ready to start finding the coordinates. I'm of course fa faced with the problem that today roads and things like that look completely different than they did in, um, in 1895. So what I have done here is to help me find place of coordinates I have loaded a modern map which is roads, the thin blue lines uh, is roads and uh, the railroad and then I've loaded a map that I know has coordinates from um, around 1950, 60 so a somewhat older map but not nearly as old as the one I'm going to um, put coordinates on it but just to help me find um, places I can recognize on the historical map. So I try to find something that hasn't got the newest development on it because the area around the campus has changed very much in the last 30 years. So I'll start out getting my georeferencing tool, start the tool up and load in my map. And I won't give it a coordinate system because I haven't got a coordinate system. And it comes out in this ugly red color. And I'll reduce the colors by saying it's a stretch to the complete data set. So it looks a wee bit more natural. Good. Once I'm there, I can start saying, okay, what can I find on this map? Well, I have this town of Himalu up here. So if I zoom in on Himalu here. I can recognize I have this road structure still on the modern map here. That goes up like that. So I can be relatively certain that this junction here, I might zoom a bit more in on the map here. I can be relatively certain that this road junction here is the same one as I got there. So that's a good approach for a coordinate. So I'll click this button here that is add point and I'll click on it. Then it'll ask me to type in the coordinates or pick them up from the map canvas. So I just click on the map canvas and it has picked up the coordinates and I say OK. 
So that was one point. Um, of course, I could choose some other points around here, but you want to want these ground control points to be as dispersed as possible on your map. So I will find somewhere different than this down here, a town called Winning. So I'll zoom on this one and I'll go and just deactivate that for a moment and say back, back and I think that is winning it, so I'll reactivate this one. And we got winning, and again here, if we look close, we can still recognize the original road structure of uh, the old town of winning in the new road structure. So I can be relatively sure that this junction here is the same as the junction up there. So same procedure, add a coordinate point on my map, pick up a data set from my canvas and say that's okay. So I've got two coordinates. Well, how many do you really need? Well, the basic rule is that when you do this, this is by the way what we're doing is that we have loaded our data set, we have started the plugin, in the plugin we have um, loaded our raw data, we have and then use the tool up here to set our coordinates between them and what we need is that we need a n, then that's the number of control points we need, is the order of our transformation and transformations are in first order, second order, third order and QGIS has some special ones, but those are the one one normally uses. And um, so the first order will need the power of one, that's two plus, oh, sorry, the power of one is one plus two, that's three. So we only need three coordinates at the minimum. How many you need depends on how distorted your map is. It's been an L photograph, you'll probably need um, a second order transformation and then you'll be needing six points. So I've got two now so I'll need some more. Um, so I'll just uh, bring me back to and there's also so I've got one here and I've got one up there and let's see if we can't find one down this end here. Well we have Kampstrup and Kapstrop is somewhere south of Roskilde. I think that's there. So I'll wait for the map and here we see Kapstrop is this little town that was now a neighbor to a larger town called through and in here we can have the same road structure as we had on our historical map. Let's zoom a bit more in here. So we can see more or less the same roads um, coming up. So I can be relatively sure that that road junction there is the one that I have on the map. So I'll click on road junction there and ask it to pick up from my map coordinate that one. So I have now got three points which is the minimum I need in order to do a transformation. Uh, oops. Um, if I want to have some indication of my quality I'll need at least one more point so I'll pick up one in the center of Roskilde in here where we have the cathedral oops so there Put the, deactivate that one while I navigate and uh, find the cathedral area 
which is in here and zoom on that oops like that activate my background image so what we can see is that this, we have the cathedral there and we have the cathedral there and then we have the main street going down here and this road must be the same one as there so I can now add my control point here and say pick up from here good I've now got some points Oops, cancel. Um, and I can now say, okay, I got four points and I need three for transformation. Do I go up in settings and say I want to do a transformation? And I want to do a first order transformation. And I want to do it, it says resampling. And if it's a topographical map, you will always use a nearest neighbor. If it's a photograph, you probably use a cubic. I just stick with my nearest neighbor. And uh, it asks to want a report of my uh, what I've been doing. So yeah, I want a report. Just store it. Yeah, documents. Uh, OneDrive now. Um, documents. Yes, map report. I just want uh, the report, don't want the map. So, and where do I want to save my final map? I want to save down my GIS data and call it, yeah, modify, that's fine. So, I have uh, done it and I can then press the little play button. And what you can see here is it has given me some error messages in map units. So I'm off by approximately one to four meters per point. So yeah, I'm satisfied. Um, I could of course some, create some more. And on the transformation button, it will say that it has succeeded. And if I now go back to my Close this and go into QGIS and in my browser window, in my JS folder, I can find my folder file here. Yeah. So this was my original one with no coordinates on it. And this is the one with my coordinates on it that I can load in. And you can see that it relatively well matches my roads